Hey everyone, I'm Zach from Workshop Edits and welcome to my shop. Welcome back to the three-part series of building the suspended crane system for my camera setup in the shop. So just as a reminder, in episode one, we focused on building the roof-mounted height adjustable system as well as the I-beam that the dolly system is gonna mount onto. In the second episode of this series, we're gonna focus on building the actual dolly that's gonna run along that eight foot track that I built in the previous episode. If you haven't checked out part one of the series, I would highly recommend you do that. I'm gonna leave a card up here for you to check that out as well as a link in the description. That way you can go in, check out how we started off this project, how we got to this episode, and then you can follow along for the rest of the build in the series. So what we're gonna do for this first part of the video is break down all the material that we need for the dolly and then we're gonna get onto the assembly part of it. Let's do it. Alexa, turn on the vacuum. Okay. All right, also the plywood edges on these pieces in particular are really sharp. And since my hands are gonna be moving this thing a lot, I'm also going to go over to the router table and just route a tiny little rounded, like one eighth inch uh, round over on the top edges of the piece. So let's do that. All right, so everything has been cut to its final size. The next step is to begin assembling this thing. I'm just gonna do that with some glue, brad nails, and then eventually some screws to make it really strong. Then we can move on to figuring out where all of the wheels are gonna go, and then get this thing mounted up there to make sure that it fits and it rides smoothly. All right, so I have the track system lowered to its lowest point right now. And one of the things that I had predicted would happen because it hangs so far from the ceiling is that it would have the ability to move back and forth. It probably can sway about four inches each way. So what I'm gonna do is build a little attachment that can attach to the top of the beam here, and that can also attach to my storage space up here that can contract and expand as this gets raised up and down. And depending upon where this lands, I can lock that in place, which will prevent it from swaying this way or this way. So that is what we are gonna do next. So I already designed what this thing is gonna look like in SketchUp, but now that I have it hung and I was able to measure exactly where it's gonna go, I'm just gonna quickly sketch out what I think it needs to be. So we said that the shortest length that it would be is 21 and a half inches. The longest it would be is 35 and a half inches. So if I build two pieces that are 19 inches long each that can fold into each other and contract, that means we could get them to overlap by three and a half inches even at their longest point and still contract and have space for the hinges on each side as well as some structural support here. So I'm gonna give that a try. I have some extra material if I mess this up, but I think it's gonna work. Now what I need to do is head over to the router table and route out that same half inch groove that we did for the adjustable height mounts in part one of the series. So just as a reminder, the way that I'm doing this is I will raise the half inch router bit up a little bit over half the thickness of the three quarter inch material. Then I'm gonna route out that channel from left to right. Then I'm going to raise the bit up to just over the thickness of the plywood and then route the same channel again and that's gonna give me a nice clean groove down the middle of it. Okay, I'll put a SketchUp model up on screen, but the way that this is gonna come together is I have two side pieces and then I have the two pieces that I just routed out over at the router table. One will go on top, then we are gonna sandwich in between a sliding mechanism, which is just another piece of plywood, and then this will go on top. Okay, so this thing is all assembled. What I'm gonna do is just go back and add a couple of screws at all these places just to really firm things up. Now, when I was building this box, the one thing I wanted to make sure of is that because a piece of three quarter inch plywood is gonna go in here and slide in and out a lot like the roof mounted joints, I didn't want this gap to be too tight. So what I did was just use a piece of three quarter inch as a spacer to make sure, and then I added just a little bit of thickness to 
the width of these side pieces so that this would have a little bit of play in it. I think it's gonna work out really good and it's not gonna get stuck when I slide things. The last thing to do for this particular piece is to just finish building out this particular sliding mechanism, which I'm gonna cut over at the table saw and then I need to add a hole to it at the drill press to accept the lag bolt. So I have a couple of carriage bolts again, a set of washers, which is going to help protect the wood over time. And just because I don't have any more of those star knobs, we're gonna be using some wing nuts. So I'm gonna take a carriage bolt again and a washer, and I'm gonna feed it through the underside. And I'm going to slide in this piece, feed through the carriage bolt. I'm gonna take another one of these, and by having two of these, it's gonna prevent this from wiggling too much, and I think it's gonna work out a lot better than if we just had one of these in there. This will just slide along. One thing before I do a final assembly, when I was just messing with the carriage bolts and the kind of assembly process, I noticed that there was just a little bit too much play between these, and I think it's gonna end up causing a problem. So what I did was just milled up a couple of really thin strips that I'm gonna put on the outsides of this, and that's gonna allow me just to tighten things a little bit better, and I think it's gonna end up working better in the long term. The last thing I'm gonna do, actually, just to make it slide as easy as possible is add a little bit of paste wax to this top new little piece I glued on and the underside of it, then I think it's gonna work perfectly. Seems to work great. All right, so in order to connect this new extension piece to the beam and to my support, I bought a couple of these little three and a half inch galvanized steel hinges. So I'm gonna screw them into each side of this piece and then I'm gonna get it mounted. Right now I have the beam at its lowest point, so I have the extension wing extended to its furthest distance so that when we get it up there, we can fine tune it a little bit and get it nice and secure both into the beam and into the wall. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I think that feels stable enough. All right, so the extendable mount, I think is good to go. I got it attached to the rafters up in the garage as well as to the I-beam and it feels pretty secure. So what I'm gonna do is put the camera over in the corner and then just do a test to see how difficult it is to raise this thing all the way up to its highest point and then lower it back down. Okay, so the way that the flexible arm is gonna be mounted to the dolly is using a piece of three quarter inch all thread and a couple of really large three quarter inch nuts. So what I'm gonna do is take the dolly, mark and measure the center of that and then drill out a three quarter inch hole over at the drill press. Then the all thread can be fed through it and then using those large nuts, what I'm gonna do is mark and measure the outline of that hexagonal pattern and then use my plunge router to actually plunge out that extra space that way those nuts can sit recessed in on each side of it and that all thread can then be threaded through the wood and turn and spin and it's not gonna damage the wood and it's gonna allow that system to pivot around that 360 degree motion. And I think it's gonna work out really well and it's gonna last a really long time. So that is all done, that went really well. One additional tip that I'll give is once I had the first bolt already in place and recessed into the dolly is I took the all thread and I fed it through and then used the other side of it to screw on the other nut and mark exactly where I wanted to route out. That way the two nuts would be exactly lined up and that way when the all thread went through, it would be perfectly straight and I wouldn't have any issues doing that. If they're not straight, you're not gonna be able to thread it through. So uh, use that tip, super helpful and it worked out perfectly. So the next step is to take the end pieces that we already milled up and routed these edges for and place them exactly where we want them to go and start to figure out where the wheels are gonna go for this. So I don't want these wheels to be so tight to the dolly that it's not gonna be able to roll. So what I'm gonna do is use a scrap piece of plywood that's the exact same thickness from the same sheet of plywood that I used on the dolly itself. And then I'm just gonna take these little spacers. This is the thinnest piece of material I have. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a pencil through there, so I'm just gonna use a screw and I'm gonna just feed it through and that's gonna mark exactly where my wheel should go. So the wood screws that I originally were gonna to use to attach the wheels to the dolly just weren't strong enough. So what I ended up doing was switching things up and using some lag bolts and screws 
the screws will rest up against the bearing and it'll allow the wheels to spin freely when I move the dolly along, so it's gonna work out perfect. So what I did was I went over to the drill press and I drilled out the four holes that I would need to drop those lag bolts through, slipped in the bolts through the wheels and then added a washer and a screw to the other side. Then what I could do is mark out the locations of all of the holes that I would need to drill from the base of the dolly through the sides of it where the wheels would be mounted. And I wanted to pre-drill everything so that I didn't split any of the plywood and it would look really clean. So the way I did that was I marked and I measured out where I wanted those holes to go and then drilled them all out at the drill press. I then could clamp things together and drill through and mark on each of the side pieces where the corresponding holes would go and then separately drill those out. And then I could use just a couple of three and a half inch wood screws through each of those holes to roughly attach everything in place. All right, now that this thing is complete, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it up here and give it a test fit. Seems to work really well. All right, so now that I know that the dolly fits perfectly on the track, what I also wanna do is add a second set of wheels, which are gonna go mount to the top of this so that these wheels will then be pushed up against the top part of the beam. That way when there is a lot of weight distributed on one side of this thing, just given the weight of the camera and the flexible arm, this won't be inclined to rotate or press up against the beam and I think it's gonna work really well. So what I'm gonna do is jump up there and mark and roughly measure where this wheel will go and then basically drill corresponding holes for all four sides of this thing and mount them in the exact same way that I mounted this. All right, so that will wrap it up for part two of this build series. Please join me next week for the final episode of this build series and get to see this thing in action. If you did not check out episode one, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it linked right here. And if you're watching these videos in the future, I'll go ahead and leave episode three linked right here. If you are not already subscribed, I would love it if you would do that so you could check out me using this new camera system in all of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.